Gotta have a few more minutes. <laughs> Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Grace Chapel. Uh, hola, como estas? Uh, bendecido. Bendecido. I, uh, I was going to the medicine shop over there, you know, for, long, uh, for, for a long time. That's before my insurance changed. And Scott over there, you know, he'd go, hey, Lupe, how are you doing? I'd say, I'm, be I'm bendecido. He'd go, what does that mean? I said, I'm blessed. He goes, he goes, bendecido. I said, yes, bendecido. So every time he went in, it was, you know, for a couple of times, he'd go, what was it that you told me? And I said, I'm bendecido, bendecido, bendecido de Dios or bendecido del, uh, uh, you know, del, uh, del Padre. Wow. And, uh, and so now I still go in there and he goes, oh, bendecido, he goes. <laughs> it is, it's good to, it's good to do that, so. Uh, just a, just a couple of things to note. You know, there's a lot of um, um, just just uh, there was there's been a lot of things going on, especially with the election last night yesterday. Uh, we got in and out pretty quick yesterday. That was nice, you know, being in our our pre but we were there early, and that was really good to be able to do that. Uh, and so many of you are many of you have um, uh, folks that you liked, and then you got and then you did you got some that you didn't uh, vote for. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say that you, you know, I, you know, I had my selection and I got some that I liked and, and there were some that I, I picked that I was, didn't necessarily want in there, but they got, they got it, you know, so it's, it's, it's great. You know, it's just, it's great. I know that some of the people were looking at, at some of the local, uh, some of the local ones. And I know that, uh, Joe Conrad got, uh, mayor and then, uh, uh, Levi Johnson was one that got in, not, uh, Barbara Nunn got in and then, uh, uh, Cindy Tapia got in here locally. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's the way it turned out. You know, that's that's what we we all voted for. Um, maybe <laughs> I got to leave it that way. You know, it's just one of those things. And you know, just right now, it still depends on the numbers. You know, it's just uh, that's that's the thing that I'm looking at. Even though I don't, I didn't have a primary, I didn't have a contender for the primary. I'm still looking at the numbers. You know, how many people have got to get out and vote. You know, we're, we're, looking at, we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, 48% voter turnouts in some places. 33, I saw one at 33% turnout. And I'm thinking, gosh, guys, you know, you're giving away the store and then you're complaining about it, you know? It's just kind of like, you don't do that. You just don't do that. So, uh, yeah, that's a good point. No vote is a vote. Listen to that, guys. No vote is a vote. Yeah, and so... Uh, yeah, there, I, you know, if you guys are interested, I got, I just kind of uh, marked down the ones that won and didn't win, and and the ones that, well, the ones that won, and then you can look at the ones that didn't win. So, uh, you, you you have them here. Another thing, you know, and uh, it's hot and humid out there. It is very hot and humid. Um, I just, uh, it's just really, it's really amazing because, um, you know, if you, I have a little, I have a little sign. Let's I just dropped something, so I had to disappear for a little while. I, I did. So um, I've, got a, I've got a sign that I didn't put out, but I'll put it out in the general, and I'll take a picture of it and multiply it a bunch of times. And, uh, and uh, what it says is vote, you know, vote Republican, uh, vote American, vote Republican. And, uh, you know, and some people are talking about, you know, party stuff and all that kind of thing. You still got to look at the people who you're voting in, in their character and what they stand on. Right. You know, you, you really do. You really need to look at that. I think that's really vital. Um, uh, for the most part, the Republican Party got a lot of stuff done. And, uh, and it was good to be part of that. It really was good to be part of that this last session. Um, you know, we, uh, and I got a list, list here, but I want to start off with the, uh, you know, we, we were able to f pass the 15, uh, 15 week abortion ban. And, and, and criminalize the doctors who, who, who perform abortions. And, and, to me, yes. Yes. And, yes. and, and to me, that was big. That was big. However, you know, oh, my, my, my response, and I, I don't remember, it was one of the guys that was asking up there at the Capitol, and I said, it didn't go far enough. I said, I don't want any abortions taking place. So when the Supreme Court went ahead and overturned that, uh, we went back to pre row law. I mean, that's going to get caught up in the courts. And when we go back in session, we're going to go back in and, and, and uh, move the 15-week one out of the way. We can do that. 
Yeah. Amen. You know, we're, law, we're lawmakers. We can do that. <laughs> so, yeah. So that one. And, you know, there's going to be some other things that we're looking at. China is now um, uh, developing. No, mm-hmm. India has developed a two, uh, uh, two um, um, dose abortion process. The first one kills the baby. Uh, you take a pill yeah. and, and that one kills the baby. The other one causes the contractions to start and then you, you abort the baby that way. Oh. Uh-huh. And so, you know, there's, there, there, you know, the devil will do, you know, they'll yes. do all that kind of stuff, but no. that's still, no. but, and, and that, uh, that one is coming in through mail, mail in order. And that one is even more damage, damaging to a woman than, than a regular abortion. Baby, what would happen? Re- regular or, abortion, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's it's causing uh, it's causing some things. Audio, so I'm going to decline for now. And uh, so that's that's one of the things that you know we're really proud of. The other one that uh, you know wasn't listed on my list here uh, is the uh, is school choice. School choice. Yes. This one is the actually the it's called the backpack fund. It it follows the child. Or the uh, or the school voucher, you know, there was talk about school voucher. That's exactly what that is. It's a it's a school voucher. It gives the parent the ability to go ahead and and uh, and, and do uh, and 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 take their child to the school of their own choice. So you you all know that we closed our school. Uh, you know, my wife retired, and it was time that we we needed to school uh, close the school down. At the time that this passed. It yeah. was just crazy, but we, I just couldn't keep up with it, honestly. Sure. Just couldn't do it. However, you know, one of the things that we do still do, uh, and, and I'm kind of looking at this as a suspension. You know, I want to suspend this because if uh, we've got several young families in our church, we do. Mm-hmm. And, and we got people that I know that are still here. And if any one of them t- would choose to say, hey, you know, can I do this? Yeah, you know, exactly. we could we could we could send them to training, and and I've got the license. We got the we've yeah. got everything here. We've got you know the the mm-hmm. facility. We got everything, and so their curriculum and everything. So that's that's one of the things that we would do. Now, uh, in 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 2023, that's when the school voucher comes in, and it's just under seven thousand dollars a child. Now we could do a we could do a lot with seven thousand dollars a child. All we need is about eight students per classroom, and we could we could do a lot with that. You know, so that would that would be that would be really great. So anyway, we did that. Uh, we funded the construction uh, construction of more more of the border wall. Yay! Uh, passed the largest tax cut hey, tax cuts in that, history. Yes. That besides what Biden just said he was going to do. Uh, uh, we'll wait and see what he does. You know. <laughs> if, if well, he, it might be all talk. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's you know he's looking at the election coming up. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. You know. But let him put the wall up. I don't care what you know his motive is. You know. Uh, you know I'm not really sure, and I'm sure that there's going to be some negotiation going be, be going back and forth between the states and uh, and our state, New Mexico and uh, and uh, Texas and California. Uh, so we'll see what ha- what happens. But we we did approve. You know the the. Um, there, there are panels of wall, walls laying out in the, in the desert out there. Right. And so we allocated money for that. So whether they do it or not, we have the money to go ahead and, and get that done. So, but there's BLM land, there's, you know, there's a federal land that we can't, we can't get into, and then private land. And then the uh, Tohoda Odom, then the Tohoda the, 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 the Odom, the reservation land, you know, they, didn't, they don't want to play nice. They just don't want to, they just don't. Well, that's what I did. Is I wanted to go ahead and build a wall around the uh, around the uh, around the reservation. Uh, yeah. Give me money. I'll, I'll we'll build a wall yeah, around the reservation. I thought they finally said that they would talk about it. You know. Talk. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I like the idea. I'm having building the wall this way yeah. and including them in Mexico. Well, I wasn't going to go that far, but <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. I, I understand. I, I have, I have, I have it, it's crossed my mind, but I haven't. <laughs> then all the Americans can't go and play in their uh, the uh, casinos. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. That will hit them in their pocketbook. Uh, we passed the largest ever debt reduction, saving yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars in the future interests. That was PSPRS. That's um, we had unfunded liability for the uh, retirement system, 
and we were in debt. We were in so much debt. And so, uh, so we paid off that debt. Uh, and it saved, it's going to save a lot of money. Past election security measures, uh, those won't go into effect until s September 26th, it's just before the, uh, uh, the general election. So uh, I was going through the bills that we, we passed on that. Past major job bills, um, yeah, uh, in, in, in a lot of different sectors. It, it won't go into effect until the 24th election. Uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, well, I said it won't go into effect until September 26th. Oh. Yeah. It, it's September 26th, the, the, the day 6th. Well, 26th, not, not year. year. Not okay. year. Not year. Not year. Oh, yeah. the, the day. <laughs> Good point. See how communication works? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys. Hey there, Jacob. I see you. Matt's on. Uh, yeah, well, bless the Lord. And uh, protecting our veterans and bases. I went ahead and I, uh, I delivered uh, the list of bills to our uh, VFW. They wanted to know what we had passed. I went over there and I looked at that. And then long-term water bill, that's, that's uh, you know, mitigating water, our uh, water shortages. Keep raining, keep raining. Keep sending the rain, Lord. You know, on, on, uh, the most important thing about the whole election thing is stuff, the numbers are still fluctuating until they, until they decide what's going to happen. And we probably won't know what's happening. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I, I was looking at one report and I was under, you know, the, I was under on one report. I was at uh, 15,000 15, and uh, 15,000, about 15.5. And then I looked at another report just just earlier, and it was I was at eighteen seven. So um, I'm, you know, I think you know I think they're okay. I think that one one of them was reported at nine o'clock, okay. and then the other one was reported today. So uh, those are those are some serious numbers. I mean, you know, those are cool numbers. You know, it's just thinking about that. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. I mean, when I was in city council, well, I was worried about. You know, getting 400 votes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. <laughs> the Lord is good. God, God is good. And you know, and what we need, we we need, you know, pe common sense people up there that will be able to yeah. look at bills and say, no, I'm, we're not doing that one. Yes, that one looks like it's good for the people. It's just that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. And they take the time to look into them, not just take them at face value. Oh yeah. Or yeah. someone's yeah. word. Yeah. No, you got to question everything up there. So, all right, let's pray. Uh, the thing that I was going to say is that we, above all everything that we're doing, you know, we know that all of this is in God's hands, and we need to continue to pray uh, that these things, you know, that things will move forward. Uh, I'm excited about this next session coming up because now I, I can see the kind of bills that I want to, I want to work on, and and pass. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know. Uh, on Sunday morning, we were talking about Jesus healing. Uh, you know, we went through the, uh, the leper, mm -hmm. a centurion's uh, servant that was with fever, and then uh, the mother-in-law that had the, you know, the, uh, the fever as well. Mm -hmm. And Jesus healed them all. And it just made me think about the healthcare sector mm -hmm. in Arizona mm -hmm. and how, it's operate, how it operates and what we're doing to provide services and not and where we're getting in the way. You know, government can get in the way, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and how we can keep the feds from coming in. And, 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 and yeah, that's right, you know, because they're, they're dictating to a lot of the hospitals, rural hospitals, what need, needs to be done. Yeah. And they're listening. Uh, and and the, reason that, the reason that they do that is because they're getting federal funds. Yeah, that's what it is. And they can dictate. Yeah. Once, once you get federal funding, they can dictate to you. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, but you know that's that's our business, folks, is being able to take care of people. And honestly, you know, we want to come before the Lord in humility and uh, and in truth, and and be able to ask Him just to lead us and guide us as a people, and give us the uh, uh, the knowledge and just the uh, the care to be able to uh, know what we need to do. And you know, when we speak, to be able to speak the truth and, and speak it in love and to as well. So let's pray. Pastor? Yes, ma'am. Can we also pray for my sister, Lori? She's back in the hospital again. Oh, no. Okay. We'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had, a, we had, I had brothers that did that. <laughs> yes. So uh, let's pray. 
Father, we, uh, we come before you today. And God, we know that you're a good God. Father, you're a, a, God, of, a God of covenant. A God that uh, uh, through that covenant have, has provided blessings for us, the Lord. And, and, and in that covenant, you said, blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. And Father, that is our prayer. That is our, our cry out to you, Lord Father, that you would be Lord, Father, over not only the state, but also the, the nation, O Lord God. Father, we pray that you would, you would direct, Father, the, uh, uh, you know, all of the things that are going on around us, the private sector, the, uh, the public sector, Lord Father, all of the, um, everything that is going on around us, Father, for the, so that we might do good uh, and, and, and that we might uh, benefit from the blessings that you have uh, given to us. Father, we pray that you would just uh, stop the enemy, stop Satan, Father, from, uh, you know, coming in and, and destroying the lives of our young people through indoctrination, Lord. I know that there's, there's a, a lot of people don't understand how this indoctrination can creep in in a lot of different ways, Lord. And even rise up in the midst of, 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 of schools, school activity, oh Lord God. Father, we pray that you would help us to turn, Father, these things around, God, in the name of Jesus. We know that we're, we're powerless without you. And we need you, oh Lord God. And we, we thank you, Lord Father, that we, uh, we, we do have a republic. And Father, that this is not a dictatorship or a monarchy, Lord Father, to where things swing one way and then they swing another way. And Father, but we pray that once they swing, that they would, they would be uh, permanent for us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we do pray for Kansas. And uh, they're, over, they're, over, uh, they're establishing abortion in their state, Lord. Father, but we also understand that there's been people that said that the uh, uh, the way that the the ballot and the votes the the way that the ballot was written they didn't know whether they were voting for or against this measure oh lord god and father we pray against the lies of satan oh god in the name of jesus and father somehow lord father we know that you will uh, you will find victory in this uh, in this situation god in jesus name we bless and praise you lord father god and i thank you for our, my brothers and sisters God, I see brothers and sisters every day, even when I'm in the community, wherever I travel, Lord, Father. We, uh, it's great to be able to see the fellowship that we have with our brothers and sisters. God, in Jesus' name, we bless you and praise you. And Father, be with those that uh, are uh, struggling, are going through things in their lives, not knowing which, which direction to take, Lord God. We pray that you, we, you would be with them as well. Father, our hearts are that we unite ourselves together as Christians so that we might be able to be one voice, Father, one, of one judgment, of one spirit, O oh Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I, you know, I, I've been getting this feeling in my, my, my spirit that everywhere I go, I need to stop and pray. Yeah. In any, everything, every little thing, you know, just stop and pray. Just say, can we pray right now? Can we pray right now? <laughs> and it's moving in my heart, and it's, it's good stuff. All right. All right, Stephen, let's get to... Uh, Let's get to worshiping the Lord or offering our, our songs to him. Yes. Oops, I did I did that backwards, but that's okay. There we go. Okay, first one I got uh, is the new Lord. Okay. Good. Good Lord. New Lord. Amen.
see that. <laughs> Let me move that over just a little bit. <clears throat> Actually. Oh, oh, I know. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> They're all busy now. I know. That's a that's homegrown uh, uh, production for you. <laughs> that's a little better. <laughs> the, the funny, the funny. Well, I think the one leg is the, on the, the last are coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, it's the legs. You know, um, uh, as we look at the, as we look at the book um, in, in the book of Joshua, uh, we're in chapter ten and verse twenty. I thought we were in twenty-eight. 
Yeah, that's where we yeah, stopped. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I, I read uh, when you read through uh, chapter ten, chapter let's see, chapter ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen, uh, you begin to realize that uh, it's all of the same thing. It's just a lot of the same thing, and it's conquest, 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 conquest. And you look at that and you think, oh my goodness, you know, um, and, and 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 it made me think about the life of Joshua. And I was wondering, you know, God knew that he created Joshua for a, 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 a specific purpose. Now, when you, look at, uh, when you look at the life of Moses, you look, you look at what he did in light of what Joshua is now doing. And you see two different, uh, two different purposes of life. You really do. And so, you know, a lot of times you think, well, I got to be like Moses. I got to be like Moses. But no. That's not what Joshua was called to be. He was a warrior leader, where, where Moses was more of a shepherd um, and, and a deliverer. He really was. So when you start looking at the two different, uh, and, and, and Joshua, you know, he was, he was mentored by, by Moses. And God needed to use him in a different, you know, just totally different way altogether. And it's really important, guys, that we, you know, a lot of times we make judgments. And, you know, as I was going through this, I was thinking, wow, look at this conquest. This is, this, this is no joke. This, you know, there's no joke because, I mean, peoples were getting conquered. Peoples were getting put aside. I mean, you know, they were getting killed. A lot of people were, uh, died during uh, uh, Joshua's conquests. And, and it was purging the land so that they could go in. And it was his job to, uh, to conquer and then to split the inheritance for the nation of Israel. And, uh, you know, at the end of this, at the end of the conquest, one of the things that you're going to find is that he got old doing the job that God called him to do. Okay, he really did. And it says, and, and then you, you see in Samuel, you know, you know once you start hitting uh, the book of Samuel, you begin to realize that the Philistines are still in that promised land area. They really are. That was because he got old and, and they weren't able to completely, you know, uh, get rid of all of the Canaanites. They got rid of a lot of them, and uh, uh, but they weren't able to get uh, get uh, they weren't able to get get all that done. So it depends on you know really depends, you know it, you know like it, it talks about um, there's a verse that talks about the sons of Is 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 Isachar Isachar Isachar. They they knew how to read the times. They knew how to read the times so that they could uh, they could advise David on on how to proceed, you know, in his uh, uh, in his kingship and also in in being able to you know battle some of the, uh, the the folks around him. So it's really important that we look at that. You know, really important that we look at that kind of thing. I like um, I like to think and where where my mind went next on this on the kind of thinking that I was making between Moses and Joshua was that. It, um, I was thinking then about the book of Ephesians, you know, the, the book of Ephesians, because the book of Ephesians has the full armor of God. And then Paul talks about that our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. And the way that you do that is through the word of God. Okay. However, this is one of the things that I think this is, uh, you know, and I, I just kind of think about how, you know, Christians in general kind of think about things, you know. We have expectations when we come to church, but we really need to be able to put those expectations and 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 put them through the Word of God. Yeah. Don't you know? Because, uh, but then again, there's certain things that we have. It says to discern the body of Christ. We need to discern the body of Christ. Okay, that means that when you walk into church, you know, you might feel like, oh, I just want to be so close to Jesus. I just want to worship and just take in his goodness and his loveliness and his glory and majesty and just, you know, be tucked away with Jesus. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. What's that? There's a problem with that? Uh, <laughs> sometimes. No. It, it, there, it can be a problem. And I'll show you where it, where it can be a problem with that. See, because in the book of Ephesians, it talks about the, the, the body of Christ being a bride. The bride of Christ. Okay? But it also talks about it being a tabernacle or, you know, or, or a building. It's an edifice. OK, so, you know, sometimes you're 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 part of the structure. You're a wall. You're 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 firm, firm foundation. 
I'm part of that wall and I'm not moving, you know? And, um, and you're a wall there, you know, and some, uh, some guys would like to be part of this, you know, the wall that's, co that's called the studs. Never mind. <laughs> okay, I'm going back to my youth group days. <laughs> But honestly, you know, sometimes we want that we want that firmness taking place there. Okay, here's the other one: is is that um, and and, and I'm, I'm laying I'm laying an introduction and foundation here as I'm teaching, is because uh, you know, and and the in in Ephesians it talks about the body of Christ being uh, being an army, put on the full armor of God. You are soldiers for Christ. Now watch this. You get somebody that wants to have a kumbaya moment with Jesus, and she comes in and sits next to someone who has been through spiritual warfare, still in the middle of it, and she says, I just want to worship Jesus. Well, what's wrong with you? Can't you see the devil's attacking us? <laughs> All of a sudden, now you've got somebody going, <laughs> I thought I was having a wonderful time with Jesus. See, the, the, the Bible tells us to discern the body. See, and, and, and as, I, as I started going in through, you know, this portion of this, all you're going to hear is conquest after conquest after conquest. I, and, and you're going to go like, enough. <laughs> I was looking at this and I'm kind of like, wow, this is amazing. So, you know, what we need to do is we need to look at the purpose of God. You know, and, and the other thing, and when you start going into, because... This is the blood and guts of the, this is the blood and gut. There's a lot of blood and guts going on here. We remember we, uh, we talked about two weeks, three weeks ago that the, uh, the Gibeonites came and, and they, they deceived Joshua. Remember that? They said that they were from a faraway land. They had all this and they were just, you know, not too far away from where they were at. And they, they made it, they made a pact with Israel and, and Joshua. And so they made a covenant with them and they had uphold it. Once Joshua found out and he said, why did you do this? And he said, because we heard what you did with the five kings. Remember the five kings? Well, uh, well, let's see. No, they, they heard of what, what, what Israel had done with previous kings. And then they said, we don't want you to destroy us. We will do anything for you. Put us into civil service and we will be your servants. And, and he did. So then, then uh, the five kings came and said, we need to destroy the Gibeonites and, uh, because they have partnered with Israel. So the Gibeonites came over to Joshua and they said, you know, you need to protect us. And that's where I, I said that sometimes your failures are used by God for his benefit. Rather than Joshua having to attack five kings at different points, he brought them all to one place. And he was able to conquer them. So sometimes you look at a problem and you think, oh no, what did I just do? You know, and yet God is able to use that. It was just amazing to be able to see that. So now Joshua has got the job of going in, into. So that's where we're at at this point in, 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 in Joshua's life. So, you know, he, he's not like Moses who's shepherding the, the, the nation of Israel. He has called every man from the age of 20 under to serve in, 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 in the military. This is what they're doing. And it's a very active military. This is not like it's you know just kind of a peacetime military, you know, military where you're gonna get your education. Um, this is a very active, active time. And so this is where we're at. Now, let me, let me show you, let me just kind of explain to you some of the, uh, some of the way that it, it goes. You know, it's just amazing that they, like I said, so if you look at the map, if you look at the map, and you re I don't know if you recall the map, you have the easiest way to see this is, you remember where the Sea of Galilee is, you have the Jordan come down, and then, and then you have the Dead Sea, okay? Really interesting that Jericho was on the north, northeastern tip of the Dead Sea. So you have, the, you have the Dead Sea down here, you have the Sea of Galilee up here, um, and then, uh, but they're on the northern tip here. Jerusalem is not far from that to the west, to the northwest, not far from Jerusalem, from uh, Jericho, which I thought I, I thought that was really interesting. That it's just I thought it was more central or more, I, you know. But that's Samar Samaritans are more toward the north. Okay, that's what you find. So 
what 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 Josh, what Moses did is he brought them all the way up there. They conquered uh, uh, they conquered the, the the five kings. They crossed over the river. They they crossed over. Now what they're going to do is all the, the the kings that we're going to be discussing here are going to be the the kings to the east of Jericho. That's where they entered the promised land, east of Jericho, uh, and uh, 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 southeast of Jericho. It's going to be directly east, and then they're going to conquer the southern part, come back around, and then go north, almost like a, a figure eight. They're going to make that figure eight thing. By the time he gets conquering all that, and by the time we get to chapter thirteen, we're, we're, it's going to say that you know that Joshua is old now, and. Uh, the Philistines, they even conquered Gaza. And, and many of you know where Gaza's at. They conquered that. But north of that was where a lot of the Philistines were at. And they were the ones that gave David the problem later on. And, and they were not, they just run out of, you know, they, they just run out of steam is what happened. Joshua didn't run out of steam. He just got old. <laughs> You know, he just ran out of life. That's what he did. He, he did get, he just got, he just got there. So, so, so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, chapter, uh, verse 28, it says, on, on that day, uh, Joshua took uh, Mac, uh, Mac, and smote, smote it with the edge of the sword and the king thereof, and he utterly destroyed them and all the souls. Okay? He destroyed all the souls who were therein he let none refrain, remain, and he did he did to the king Makeda as he did to the king of Jericho. This king was not with the five listed earlier. Okay, they were not. Okay, now just another note. I want you to get just get an idea here. Some people think that God is a meanie weenie, you know, because he goes in and he starts telling Joshua to destroy all the souls. And when he went in, he killed men, women, and children. All of them. Children? Yes. All of them. Now, it was because of what they taught and what they, how they lived. They were the most immoral, godless nations that there were out there. They, they would have, you know, they, they, they didn't honor marriage like, they, like Israel did or other nations did. They would swap. They would do all kinds of things. The women would have to go to the temple, uh, the temple, uh, the temples, uh, as virgins to give their virginity away to their God, and the priests that were appointed to them before they got married. So, if a, uh, if, if a, if a young man married, uh, proposed to a young woman, she would have to go to the temple first, be violated in the temple, and then he could marry her. You know, that was all that kind of stuff. And then they were passing their children through the fire. They were doing all kinds of things. However, this is one thing that I want you to remember. When God is annihilating all those souls, you know, again, we have to think about heaven and hell. Where, do, where did these people go? Where did, where did the people of the Old Testament go? Like all of these Canaanites that Joshua went in and destroyed. See, God has, God has a much bigger plan. A lot of times we think temporal. We think in temporary basis, you know, they killed them, they laid in the fields, they, you know, there's, they died, period, end. Yes, they did die, but God did not forget them. That's one of the things that we have to remember is because when in the Old Testament, when people that were outside of Israel died, they went, they went into the place, uh, they went to the, the place called hell or Sheol, okay, they went there. It was a holding place of the unrighteous dead. In fact, the, the Jewish rabbis say that that's where they went to. Okay, the place of the unrighteous dead. That's where the um, the, uh, the 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 rich man went. Lazarus went to where the bosom of Abraham. Remember, so there are two places that you could go in the in the Old Testament. So all of the people that are dying that were unjust were in a holding tank. Okay, we're going to see a lot of blood and guts. That's why I'm telling you this, because a lot of people think that God is a, um, uh, and I've heard a lot of different words about God in the Old Testament. And so, so, so he puts them in this holding tank. The righteous, the ones, the ones that are, are obeying, uh, G, uh, are the, they're obeying, obeying the laws of Moses 
And those that are under the, um, uh, the covenant of God, then they go to the bosom of Abraham because of the covenant. They have a different outcome. One is a blessing. It's called paradise. The other one is a, a place of torment where they are temporarily paying for their, for their, for their not accepting God's glory as, as Israel was demonstrating to the world around them. Okay. Now, when Jesus, now, when Jesus, when Jesus died, when Jesus died, remember the, 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 the man on the, the there were, they were the, the, what was it? The thief and the, uh, the murderer, the thief and the murderer. And one of them said, uh, Jesus, do not, when you are in your, in your kingdom, do not forget me. And then there was some chiding going on. And the other one says, leave him alone. What has he done for you? And Jesus turned. He says, do not forget me, Jesus. And he said, today you will see me in paradise. 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 Now, the bosom of Abraham was also called paradise. It was the place of the righteous dead. Okay. Now, when Jesus died, he went to the bosom of Abraham. And he says, hi, guys. I'm the son of God and we're breaking out of here in three days. <laughs> yeah, we are. And then he went down to where the holding tank of all of the unrighteous dead from the Old Testament was at. And, and, and you know, Judas was there. All of them were there. Everybody was there. All of the unrighteous dead were there. Jesus paid the sins of the whole world. From the beginning all the way to the end. Okay? So when he goes down there, he goes ahead and he takes the keys of hell and death from Satan. And on the third day, it says that he took, if you look at that, at the, the scripture in, in Ephesians chapter 4, it says he took captivity captive. They were captive in that place. It was the prison of the spirits, as well as those that died in, 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 in the Old Testament. And then you had the bosom of Abraham. He went down there. Third day that he was raised from the dead, he comes up and he tells Mary, do not touch me because I have not ascended to the Father yet. Guess who he had following him with him? All of them. He emptied, he emptied hell and, and moved paradise, the bosom of Abraham, to the right hand of the Father. He moved it. Okay? He moved it. He went ahead and he moved it up to the right hand of the Father. The only thing that's left here on earth is hell. That's the only thing that's left. Because like Paul said, he said, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And to be, you know, to be in the body is to be absent from the Lord, you know. And, uh, and, he, and he alludes to the fact that he went to heaven. He said, I once knew a man that, I once knew a man that, uh, that went to the third heaven. And, and let me tell you a little bit about, uh, you know, anytime I hit these 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 con, you know, th these teachings, I got to explain it a little bit. The third heaven was the place uh, outside of the physical realm. God created the heavens and the earth, but the 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 third heaven is outside of the physical realm. The uh, the galaxies is part of the second heaven, and then the the first heaven is part of our atmosphere. That's the way you see it. And when the angels are doing whatever they're doing here on this earth, that matters on where they're at. It, and, and, it, and Satan would go back and forth, you know, when he was up there with the sons of God and he was in the presence of, of God. So I say that because that's where paradise is at now. It's in heaven. So when a person dies, <laughs> when a person dies, uh, their spirits go to, 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 to heaven. To paradise. Now the body stays here on this earth until the day of the second coming or the day of resurrection. It's it's going to be the, it's going to be the it's going to be a second coming of Christ, and there's going to be a resurrection of the dead. And in Thessalonians it says that the bodies will be raised from the tombs, and He's bringing the spirits back, and He's joining them back together again, bringing them together like the body of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter if, you know, people are, are like cremated, they're spread off, their ashes are spread all over the place and the river takes part of grandpa down the road, the river, you know, and part of him is left over here. God, Jesus is going to pull all that together. And, you know, you've got veterans who have lost limbs places, 
And, it, and he says it's gonna, he's going to come back and it's going to be like that. So my whole point in saying that is to tell you that God has a much bigger plan for those that are going to, those that have died in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, it's different. It is appointed for men once to die and then the judgment. See, because once Jesus was revealed, God's going to make every effort to reach that soul. And once you're saved, your spirit goes to heaven. If you're not saved, you are going to that holding place until the day of judgment. And that's called hell, where the fire is not quenched and the worm dieth not. It's a place of torment. You don't like worms crawling through your flesh. <laughs> but that's what it's talking about. So uh, You said uh, uh, now the, the, uh, people who died at Canaanites, where did they go? Well, they they were when Jesus when when Jesus was raised from the dead, they 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 uh, they they believed. I, I you know I don't I don't know if anybody would not disbelieve at that point because the young rich when the rich ruler when he went down there he said I have seven brothers. Tell you know tell have Abraham go back and talk to my brothers. And, and that just that just means that now they have the revelation of what really happens on the other side. So my assumption is that all of them wanted to go get out of there with Jesus. Okay. I, you know, we're, we're, we're having it. We're, we're breaking out of this place and I'm going to be so close to you that I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss the train. OK, Amen. so they so so they, they were moved to the right hand of the father. Okay. So they're in heaven now. So they're, they're, the but they had to believe in a saving Jesus who's, you know, who saved, who, who paid for their price as well. Okay. It says he took captivity captive and, and he led them. And, and, and then when, once you start pulling the pieces together, you realize that that's what's, that's what's happening. Okay. So that's what happened. So the Canaanites that died and the, they weren't done away with just like collateral. God had a better plan for them, and it was called Jesus Christ. All of the Old Testament. Even, even to have died and then gone to the bosom of Abraham was not like being in the presence of God. Not at all. It was not like that. Until Jesus dies, and he pays for the, the sins of the world, and then, he, then, he, then he's buried, and then he's raised from the dead, giving us eternal life at that point. And, 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 and that's, that's what we get. Yeah, see how that works. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, so now we see it says, uh, and on that day Joshua took Me uh, Mecca and smote it with the edge of the sword, and the king thereof he utterly destroyed them and all the souls that were with therein, and he let none remain. So you know they were they were they died. They went to the place of the unrighteous dead, and he did to the king of Mecca as he did to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua passed from Mecca uh, and all of Israel with him to Libna and, um, and fought against Libna. And the Lord delivered it also to the king there, also, and the king thereof unto the hand of Israel and smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls who were therein. He let none remain in it, but did to the king thereof as he did to the king of Jericho. So he destroyed all of them, babies, children, women, men, all of them, he, they were completely destroyed. Not one was left. Joshua passed from Libna into the, and all of Israel with him to Lachish, and encamped against it and fought against it. Now this is now he's moving southwest at this point. I mean, he, yeah, he's moving southwest at this point. He's going down and towards the the Mediterranean Sea is where he's moving. Okay, he's moving in that direction. And the Lord delivered Lachish unto the hand of Israel, which he took it on the second day and smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls that were therein, according to all that he, the Lord, had done to Libna. Um, and so, again, uh, now he's conquered three different kingdoms, smaller kingdoms, but they're kings, kingdoms nonetheless with all of the people. He killed them all. And uh, you'll find out later that uh, some of these, uh, there was a lot of booty that was moving along with them. You know, the, 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 a, a lot of the silver 
the gold, you know, animals were, were moving along with them. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were collecting all of that. Then Horam, the king of Gizar, came up to help Lachish, and Joshua smote him and his people until he left him none remaining. I mean, this is just, this is a, uh, what do they call that? Genocide. Um, you know, that's characterized as genocide today in a lot of ways. But that's exactly what God was, was talking about. Now, genocide seems to be ultimate. And, and, it, and it doesn't go any further. Now, this, this one, God had a plan again for the Old, Testaments, Old Testament people. It, it was kind of a genocide, but that God had was putting them in a place to hold them until Jesus could come and offer them eternal life. So again, looking at this way, looking at looking at it this way, it doesn't seem to be so uh, permanent. It is it is temporary until Jesus comes. But there was some torment uh, left. You know, there was some torment uh, that was there. And from Lachish, verse thirty-four, Joshua passed to Eglon and all of Israel with him, and they encamped against it and fought against it. And they took it on that day and smote it with the edge of the sword and all of the souls that were therein. He utterly destroyed that day according to all that he had done, done to Lachish. And from there he went from Eglon, all of Israel went with him unto Ebron, and they fought against it, Hebron. Anyway, so, you know, um, yeah, Let's see. One of the things that we find here is that Joshua is very successful. He is very, very successful because God is with him. This was God's purpose. This was God's will. And this was God's intent that he would go in and clear out the land so that the nation of Israel then could inherit it. What they were doing is they were, they were basically, um, uh, this was in a, um, uh, they, they were just moving the people out so that Israel could inherit it. <laughs> I know that, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm getting some. I'm getting some of the questions. Like, boy, this is wow. God is doing some house cleaning, and, and it's, that's tough to read sometimes. When you really start looking at what God is doing, that's you know, uh, if you were on the wrong side of the border here, guys, I'm glad I was born on this side of the border. <laughs> And verse 37, they took it and smote, smote it with the edge of the sword, the king thereof and all of the cities thereof and all the souls that were therein. He left none remaining according to all that he, that he had done to Eglon, but destroyed it utterly and all the souls that were therein. Now we're probably down about who knows how many months, years. It doesn't tell us how many, you know, these are battles, folks. They're going in with a sword. They're going in with the trumpets. They're going in with, you know, they're 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 going in with spears and and uh, and you know, long swords, short swords, everything that they can, uh, shields to to battle. Now Joshua returned and all of Israel with him to Debir, and fought against it, and he took it and the kings thereof and the cities thereof and smote them with the edge of the sword and utterly destroyed all the souls that were therein, and he left none remaining. And as he had done to Hebron, Hebron, he also did to Deber, and to the kings thereof, as he had done to Libna and to her king. So Joshua smote all of the country of the hills of the south and of the vale and of the springs and all their kings. He left none remaining, but utterly destroyed all who breathed as the Lord God commanded. Now, one of the things that we have to realize is that Joshua was faithful to his calling. Very, very faithful. Yeah. And so, so he utterly destroyed that. And back then, you know, it was, it was a matter of uh, claiming the promised land. God decided that this patch of land was going to be, was going to be dedicated to him and no one else. And so that's what, that's what he gets. And, uh, uh, you know, and he, and he's really, it's really, he, what he's really doing is getting rid of the people that, have different ideologies and different beliefs. These these nations were uh, motivated a lot by uh, demonic forces. They were they were under the rule of Satan. You know how many of you have how many of you remember the um, oh let's see the uh, uh, the Bohemian Grove. Uh, have you heard of the Bohemian Grove where all of the national leaders go to California 
and they actually uh, worship the idol out there and they learn all this stuff. That's, you know, that is all spiritual to affect the lives of the nations and and the, the people that rule uh, that they they have rule under, and and um, and these people are serious. You know, they're really serious about that. That's what we're battling, folks. We're battling those kinds of forces. Okay, so in verse forty-one, let's finish the chapter here. And Joshua smote them from Kadesh Berna even to Gaza and all the territory of Go Goshen from uh, even unto Gibeon. All these kings in their land did Joshua take at one time. Oh, well, there it is. He kept fighting them until he completely removed them because the Lord God of Israel fought because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. Joshua returned in all of Israel with him to camp to the camp to Gilgal. And Gilgal was the, 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 the city where they, they, they had strength. They found strength. OK, and uh, and then we're going to go into some more of the conquests. Uh, and so if you're here next week, we're not going to go through that introduction that we did about where the souls go, you know, because we've covered that. And uh, more conquest. There's going to be a summary. Uh, again, you know, and we're still in uh, we're chapter 11 now. So we're going to be uh, conquesting into chapter 12, into chapter 13. <laughs> uh, yeah, into 14. Yeah. We we got we got some conquests going. Yeah. Yeah, he really really Yeah, he's uh they're they're con they're conquering the land and they're going to establish uh, the place where God has promised them. Now, really really interesting. This patch of ground is not just any patch of land. This is God's 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 land. And um, when th there are so many prophecies talked about th this land. Um, and, and the nation, you know, the nation of Israel goes all the way down to Egypt, up to the river Euphrates, all the way up to Turkey. The, the, the little sliver that we see today in modern times is not all of the land that, that Israel is supposed to encounter. Now, during the millennial reign of Christ, all of that land is going to be inhabited uh, there. And, and then the nations are going to be coming to that land. So, you know, when we start talking about the nation of Israel and what they're occupying at this point, it's, it's only a portion of what they were promised. And so, uh, really cool stuff. I, I like this kind of stuff. I was in there this afternoon about 2.30. I was looking at the maps, and I'm thinking, yeah. oh. Yeah. And they go all the way up, you know, um, uh, in the next few chapters, this, they, they, this is the southern part of the country that they conquered. Now they're going to be moving towards the northern part of the country, uh, the, 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 where Samaria is at, and some of those lands. Let's pray, guys. And then we'll be dismissed so we can warm up. It's, it's, it's rigid in here. <laughs> Father, we thank you and bless you, Lord God, for uh, the Bible uh, that teaches us just so many things, Lord God. Father, we know that there is cause for war warfare, even today, oh Lord God. Father, that's where the Geneva, the Geneva Convention comes in, Lord. We know that as long as we are on this side of heaven, we know that warfare is, is going to take place throughout the world and and even in our our nation where our nation will even eventually have to get involved and we are involved in skirmishes around the world as well Lord father help us to understand that uh, warfare has always been part of man's history until Jesus comes and lays all of that to rest help us to understand father the conquest also uh, the conquest of the promised land father and the place where Israel could call a homeland to be able to rest to be able to find the blessing of God and then to worship God there in Jerusalem, O oh Lord. Father, we do thank you for the history that you have laid out before us so that we might understand that we also have an inheritance of the saints. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I like this kind of stuff. I love it. Yeah. Not only are we seeing part of history, but we're, there's also that spiritual uh, side of, of things. Yeah. You know what? Uh, little Canaanites uh, little Canaanites grow up to be big Canaanites. Yes, yeah. Over the years, I've heard the word, the term purgatory. 
Purgatory. Purgatory. Where does that fit into, or what does it mean? That is, or is that that is that's, a good, that's a very, very good question. I'm, I'm glad that you bring up purgatory. Yeah, what, yeah. what is purgatory? Yes, I mean, hey. hey. I always, I had always been taught that you died and went to purgatory. Purgatory, while you were there, you were judged, and then decided which direction you were going. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a very Catholic, a very Catholic. Uh, and Not very, well. <laughs> Yeah, very, very Catholic and very uh, um, uh, Episcopalian teaching. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. What can you expect? <laughs> so, um, you know, that, that one, uh, that teaching comes from uh, some of the Apocrypha. Uh, and the Apocrypha, the Apocrypha, you know, we have the Bible that was uh, sanctioned and, and canonized. And so we have the, the, the book that we use. The Apocrypha, the Apocrypha, uh, is, yeah, is the uh, is the seven additional books that were not canonized, uh, and but the the Catholic uh, the Catholic Church, and 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 those uh, uh, denominations that came out of that use that, and that's where uh, purgatory comes in from. Well, is that so they chose they 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 chose not to include them because there was erroneous teachings on things like uh, eternal uh, destiny. Okay, so, so it's it's not like the land of the unrighteous. No, 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 no. no you have hell. Hold, hold, hold a different. Only two places. It's only two places. <laughs> different than yeah. Than what we've been. O talking only about. two places. You go. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. There's no. There's no. Uh, there's no place of chance. Oh, okay. So you can't live like the devil and hope that somebody prays you out <laughs> when, you, when, when you get to when you get to uh, purgatory. No, that is erroneous teaching. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That, now, that explains where I got. You know, and I can. Y'all probably hear from some of my past. You know, recovering, uh, recovering uh, Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> recovering Catholics. <laughs> That's what I had to See, because one of the things that you know, what I was, a, I was a Catholic, and I was after truth. I wanted to know what this book teaches. Because this is the foundation of our faith, and not traditions, not not tra uh, not traditions or do doctrines of men, but but the truth. And so I'm after the truth. Amen. You had a question. Uh, you don't mention that much about Caleb once he gets past his uh, head on there, when he when he gets the land. You don't mention too much about him, but uh, he was older than Joshua was. Uh, yeah, he was. Bit, and, uh, he will be mentioned. Uh, you know, once they start, when, uh, once he, once the conquering takes place, then the next step is going to be the uh, 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 giving, giving the land, and and he will be mentioned. But it's 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 just a short little mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From what I understand now, and I don't know whether it's true or not, uh, uh, he also Kate, uh, Joshua, too. Uh, and the oldest, yeah. We'll, we'll come across it here in this in these in these next few chapters. Yeah. So what? Uh, yeah, Stephen was asking about was uh, what happened with uh, what happened with K uh, uh, Caleb. With what? Caleb, because we had Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and he will be mentioned. Yeah. He'll be mentioned. Good night, guys.